it's Gus and I'm coming to you with more theological thoughts and yes I've got a new backdrop move the office around a bit so I've got books and if you'd subscribed you would have seen this but don't make that mistake again so immediately subscribe let's get to today's topic theological ABCs when you began to read they started you off on A, B, C. A was for Apple and B, oh, I can't remember what B was for, it was been a while. When we start thinking theologically, we've got to face a dilemma. Humanity cannot ascend to God. I'm a human being. How can I even conceive of speaking of God when He is above my abilities? And we've got to be careful because if we don't take cognizance of this, we place ourselves midway between God and man and what we say about God becomes actually just an extension of us. We actually start talking about ourselves and as if we're talking about God. And this forces our concept of God to adhere to human limitations and human logic and we miss the point. Now, the only alternative is that God comes and He reveals divine truth to us. Now, great, but even if God did that, how could we hope to understand it? When His thoughts are beyond our thoughts, when He's thinking, I mean, He's not limited by time as we are. That's just one aspect that we struggle with. And many well-meaning Christians have made this mistake. We they claim to speak of God and from the Word of God, but they're actually disguising human thinking as the Word of God. Now, I want to start with a very interesting verse, and you're not going to think, but why this verse? Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That verse is the beginning of biblical revelation. And already it says to us a lot about how God functions. Because God is acting. But that act of God is also revelation. At the same time, the revelation of God is also an act. God is revealed in what He does. And in this instance, it's creation. He's revealed as the Creator because He creates. But God is also revealed in what He has created. So when we look at the world, when we look at humanity, there are indicators that tell me you were created by a wonderful God. Now, what's important here is that God's revelation is both an act, but also the result of that act. Humans are incapable of a lot of things. And we speak of general revelation. That is the revelation we find of God in nature, in the created world. Little things that we say, but hold on, this points us in a certain direction. But the problem is, because we've lost that original connection to God, we're estranged from God, to use a nice word, we can't put these pieces together into a whole and say, ah, oh, now I see the picture. We, we've lost that ability. Because without a relationship between God and human beings, we can't conceptualize what God has revealed. And especially since it is crea greater than creation, than humanity, than anything we can come up with. But here's the wonderful thing about divine ability. God comes to man to provide special revelation. And not only does God come to man, God becomes man. And in becoming man, he lives, he dies, he is resurrected as Saviour. So God in his special revelation is also revealed in the act of saving us and in the result that he is the Saviour and we are the saved. And this special revelation restores the relationship that when that has happened, we can look at general revelation and say, ah, now I can put it all together in a big picture. Now it makes sense. Now, it's not only that the event and the act are special, but it's also special revelation in that it cannot be improved upon. Christ is the ultimate revelation of God. 
there's not going to be something more, something better. For all eternity we'll be studying Christ to understand God. Now, revelation is an event. And you might say to me, okay, but God has revealed things in the past. And maybe He'll reveal them in the future, but right now, nothing. Well, this is where inspiration comes in. To ensure that revelation is not simply an event, but a continuous process. God inspires people to record the events of revelation. And these records found their way into scripture for every one of us to read. Now, I quickly want to jump to two passages. The first one is here in 2 Peter 1 verse 21, where Peter writes, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And the second one is 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, where Paul writes, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Now, when God created Adam, the first man, the Bible tells us that he formed Adam from the dust of the earth, so there's earthly material, and then God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and Adam became a living being. Now, Peter, when he says they were carried along by the Holy Spirit, he creates the image like a wind pushing a sailboat. The Holy Spirit is like the wind, and because of the Holy Spirit, the sailboat moves. Paul speaks of God breathed. They both drawing from this example. When it comes to the Bible, we have an earthly writer, David, Moses, whoever. But the Spirit of God inspires this individual. And the unification of the divine and the human element produces a living book. This is why people will read the Bible over and over and they don't get tired because it's alive. Scripture becomes a living book because it's inspired by the Holy Spirit but also because it reveals eternal life. And now the event of revelation has become a process. And this dynamism that we find in God is linked to humanity, that humanity can also become dynamic in their existence. Now next we come to illumination, because God has revealed himself and his actions and the result inspiration has made it a process but now I read it how am I to understand it so just as God inspires he also illuminates John 20 verse 29 Jesus said have you believed because you have seen me blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed now we must be careful here. God is not here to illuminate facts. He's not there to tell us a square is square, a circle is round. We've got intelligence. We should be able to figure out that for ourselves. God illuminates His revelation in Jesus Christ. So that when we read of Christ, we can say, Ah, now I understand what it's about. And this illumination allows us to have a relationship with Christ. And it opens up to further revelation of the world of humanity and above all else about God. Now, this process of revelation, inspiration and illumination are events, but they're part of a process. So that humanity never reaches a point where they said, now we know it all. So nobody can say to me, I know everything in the Bible. I mean, you have some of the most brilliant minds that study one book their entire life and they don't know everything in that single book. Because the process of revelation, inspiration, illumination is an eternal process. It will continue into eternity. Now that I've said this, what does this mean when we approach the Bible? You see, is the Bible revelation itself? Is it a witness to revelation? Is it the longing of human, the human psyche? People thought, ooh, this would be a nice story. I'm going to write it down. Many churches say, well, we believe in sola scriptura, the Bible only. Now, there's a problem with it because you're going to start realizing if you start checking everything you believe and you do, that there's a lot of stuff that's not in the Bible, that's a tradition. Or 
that it comes from somebody. Somebody said this is a good idea and we follow it because it's a good idea. And there's a lot of issues the Bible doesn't address. The Bible doesn't tell you what kind of God to buy. Now, every person has additional sources of information. There is history, there is tradition, there's individuals who they consider to be authoritative. Now, when Protestantism began, there was, they found confusion. And so what they did was, they came up with ideas and they said it's by grace alone, by faith alone, by Christ alone. And the question arises now, what do you base this on? On the Bible alone. So the Bible became the sole authority to determine what was the revelation about Christ, about faith, about grace. The Bible was specifically used to explain what must I do to get to heaven. So authority on salvation, on Christ, grace, faith. There are traditions about it. Your granny said something to you that sounded pretty and you still follow it. There are people that talk about it. But scripture is the only canon in this matter. So when we talk about the Bible and what it says about salvation, the Bible is the only authority that, by which all else is measured. Whatever tradition or people say comes second. It is not equal to that. Is scripture just a witness to revelation? No, since inspiration makes the truth of revelation my truth. So revelation, as I said earlier, it moves beyond an event to a process. So the event of revelation has a witness. The Holy Spirit works in on this witness and it is found in Scripture. And the Holy Spirit also illuminates the individual who reads Scripture. So that the event of revelation becomes a reality in my life. Now, I love this because people have this idea, God told me. You know, I'm Napoleon, who told you? God did it. God did. Right? Now, yes, I actually slipped up there. God didn't tell you you're Napoleon. You see, your study of scripture is not canonical. It's not fully authoritative. It is your interpretation of biblical facts. And illumination may be perfect, but I'm not. And this is why in the study process of scripture, there's a dynamic between I study and we study. So as an individual, I study the Bible and I take it to a group of people to evaluate, say, Yes, we agree, or you've missed a few things. And here's an, another point in this. Scripture revelation was never intended for an individual. In the theological world, we'll tell you there's nothing new. You cannot come up with something that somebody hasn't thought of somewhere in the past. And they probably weren't the first to think of it. They got it from somebody else. Revelation was intended for the people of God. It goes to the group. So when God reveals something to one person, He affirms that revelation by revealing it to another and another. Whenever I have an idea and I come across a theologian or somebody else who had this idea before me, it's usually a good indication that it's, a, it's at least not nonsense. It's a good idea because somebody else also thought in this lights. And Scripture does not give one person revelation in isolation. So nobody sits there and like, ooh, I've suddenly discovered new truth and I'm all this, I'm this clever guy. That totally contradicts what Scripture is about. Scripture is there to build my relationship with Christ because I want to get to heaven. And in me building my relationship with Christ, I can present that truth to a larger community so that it builds their relationship with Christ. Not based on tradition or what I say, but based on Scripture as the final authority. Because it is the revelation of God. It is both the act and the end result. It is the inspiration of God. And it is where we find illumination. And I hope that after you've listened to me, you pick up the Bible a little bit more carefully. The Bible is often called a sword, and it's a sharp sword. You've got to handle it with care. But at the same time, 
there is a lot of beauty and treasures still to be discovered in there. And I encourage you to study the Bible. Keep an open mind. Look for those treasures because it will be to your benefit. God bless. Have a wonderful day.